We are riding up there <laughs> to Cherizoda Reale where stage 13 of the Giro d'Italia will finish first big summit finish and probably the biggest mountaintop finish we'll see at this year's Giro. Are you struggling already, so Ian? That's the real <laughs> note here. <laughs> I'm just trying to plan out the edit, make the edit easier for our editor. No reason that I would drop back and hold on to the van for a second. But <laughs> uh, I'm going to pace myself now that I saw the sign that said 14% gradients. 15% <laughs> Ian, 15! <laughs> Almost 9K. It is bleeping steep. I have 15% gradient. At least it's not snowing. I want my 30 back. Piece of cake. I knew he'd be back. He gets really excited at the bottom of climbs. You don't really have to worry about him now. The trees are gone. We have officially hit 6,000 feet. For this Texan, breathing is getting a little bit tough. But this road is just absolutely gorgeous. we have on film Sheehan actually dropping me. I'm avoiding, managed to avoid that being on camera. <laughs> right. you, can't, you can't give me biodynamic wine, man. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just on a day. I'm not gonna lie, I've been watching the Giro for years and I have always wanted to ride along a road that is covered with snow banks. in the snow on a glacier where a road is supposed to be for cyclists for the next stage Whew. but the road seems to be missing they have a lot of work cut out for them so I think the cyclists are gonna have some trouble need some really fat tires to get up through here but oh man are the views incredible sinking in the snow 
I mean, you see how far back. We had a lot of work and a lot of shoveling to do. Ugh. Martin came all the way up here and his Birkenstocks. He, he was actually going up this climb pretty damn hard, but turning himself inside out and he let out the angriest noise when we went around this snowbank and saw these <laughs> snow, whatever those are. We don't have those in Texas. I don't know what to call that. <laughs> but I think there were some expletives going on in his head because Ian, he loves to attack with like 500 meters to go. So I was just kind of bracing for that to happen. And uh, I think that it, it was a very well metered effort on his part. I think he knew where um, he was going. I don't. Another lost, <laughs> no, another K win for Ian. That just won't happen in Italy. He was just waiting to attack. It was me. a tie. And the rope blocked, and he was livid. He was so mad. You have to uh, take my bike and run across the snow. <laughs> Take 10 more days in the mountains. <coughs> Andrea's gonna start to get fit and remember that I dropped him on Carousel Reale. Now that we are back down from the Carousel Reale climb, I will admit that where I was standing in the snow was not where tomorrow's stage will actually be finishing. Real finish is probably one to 200 meters earlier on the climb than where we went having to climb on top of those machines to get up there it was at least eight feet if not closer to 10 feet and that's important because next week the gavia is 500 meters in elevation higher than where we are right now and we're looking at maybe close to 15 feet of snow there so they're dealing with a lot more and it's much further down the climb right now we are hearing reports that the snow blocking the road in the Gavia is as much as seven, eight kilometers down the climb from the finish. So what we saw today is really a sneak peek at what the riders could be facing next week. Some incredible views um, that will be for tomorrow's stage on stage 13. So make sure you tune in on Flow Bikes to watch. in Italy called Amaro's. We actually made a drinking trivia game about that. Go watch it on Flow Bikes uh, if you haven't seen it yet, but every region has a specialty liqueur that you drink after dinner and when they just give you the bottle, <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> apparently you, you have to you finish it off, yeah. <laughs> Start all over, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you complaining for? I mean, uh, this is life. 